Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. <coughs> Today we are going to discuss about effective search, the way forward. <coughs> so far we discussed about uh, view of literature and uh, existing and new, ex uh, new knowledge, okay, and uh, the survey, grid, and the bibliographic search, all those things. So here also it, uh, the topic continues uh, uh, with the concept is same and. Uh, little bit different topic that's it so here again the scholarly publication uh, whatever you are going to search so how it has to be there uh, about uh, its accuracy and validity of your publication I mean our uh, paper or article before publishing it all those things we will be discussing like how exactly the effective search and an effective paper has to be published like that so the scholarly publications is one wherein the published outcome is authored by the researchers in a specific field of skill. Obviously, when you are talking about a scholarly publication, it's the definition they have given here. It's nothing but uh, it's uh, the amount of work which has been done by a researcher. He wrote that paper and he published that outcome, okay, which is authored by the researchers in this given field or a specific field of skill. Now. Such work cites all sources, source contents which are used. Obviously, when your scholarly publication will have a lot of citation, I uh, will put a lot of references. Why? That means it cites all the resources, uh, whatever the contents has been used for the particular research. For example, in my work, as I have keep on telling that this thing, uh, whatever the papers I downloaded for the cell nano particles, I had quoted or cited and uh, what are the papers I have downloaded for uh, the nanobiotechnology that also I have quoted. So here the search work cites all the source contains which are used and it generally peer reviewed uh, for accuracy. Now peer review process is very important most of the reputed journals will follow this peer review process. What do you mean by peer review process? Here a lot of uh, uh, already uh, the experts in that particular field will be uh, fields will be there around three or five reviewers will be there for every paper to review and uh, as a researcher if I submit a paper to the journal the journal will take that paper and send it to all different three to five authors I mean uh, reviewers those reviewers will read the paper and they will throw their in insights maybe the, they might they can ask a number of questions that the author has to uh, answer for that then only the paper will be published so that in the different different uh, candidates will review it that's why it is called as peer review the peers are reviewing this particular article for what purpose for accuracy and validity for the publications once they give a green signal then only your paper is going to be accepted by the public publisher or the journal so essentially the audience of such works is a fellow experts and students in the field so usually what happens the audience that means who who they are doing uh, so here obviously this is works for the the experts and fellow experts are nothing but peers are nothing but fellow experts or students in the particular field now the content is typically more complex and advanced than those found in general magazines. Obviously, when you are talking about scholarly article, here the content will be more complicated. So you need to have the basic knowledge, basic ideas about the concept. If it is engineering related, you need to have engineering uh, knowledge. Uh, maybe uh, if it is civil engineering, obviously you cannot as a biotechnology engineering. If you are going to read that paper, you will also will find it very difficult to forget what layman. So that's how it is. It's more complex than uh, the normal magazine article, whatever you read. So uh, while most of the engineering researchers need to uh, refer articles that appear in scholarly journals, books, or other peer-reviewed resources or sources, there's also a substan substantially a useful content in more popular publications. So how they are going to read these engineering for researchers most of the engineering researchers they need to refer articles okay so these articles from where they have to we have in the previous classes I have told you why it is very important to generally uh, uh, take only the articles which are published in highly 
reputed journals or scholarly journals so scholarly journals or it can be the books or it can be some of the peer reviewed resources when sometimes what happens journals they will accept the paper but they will not publish it and that also i've given you brief explanation why they do that because they are every year there will be some issues like for example in a particular general uh, journal a imagine there are only four issues that means every four months only one issue will be published that uh, volume four volumes so that means for every four years one four volumes will be published i mean one public uh, volume will be published whereas in one volume it can be 10 issue that mean that means so in every two months or i mean every two weeks the or one week uh, every uh, week or uh, uh, there might be one issue okay so if the volume has is completely filled now the first volume then you will have to wait for a, your research to be published for the next value understanding so that's what so the but till then that's why it will be called it as accepted article and it will be made available for the scientific community so the researchers should all use all search tools for the comprehensive research okay what we are talking about yeah these are the uh, informal uh, in approach and aim to reach the large number of the readers including the both experts in the field and also amateurs so but the content focused on the news and trend is in the field in the field so here what happens most of the information that what you are getting that might not be available on the sources or uh, currently whatever you are getting in the news that and trends and all that might not be there because it is just accepted work or for somebody so research outcomes are not typically a first disseminated here but or but are usually meant for general reading so a researcher should use all the search tools for comprehensive search obviously if you want comprehensive search like a lot of information should be a broader range if you want to co cover then you need to sir, use many many search tools you cannot simply stick on to the google scholar alone or um, the web of science alone so no one play uh, see for example there is no single place where in one place only all the resources are existing no so that will provide all the information in one needs obviously definitely one will likely need to look into all the places that means in one website you cannot expect all the articles you have to keep on searching for all the different different databases so researchers must consider what type of information is needed based on that where it could be found he will be knowing that so not all information is available on online some information is only available in print so it can take time for scholarly and peer-reviewed information to be published so sometimes what happens whatever it takes a lot of time for uh, once you do the work all these things and all if you submit to for a paper for review only they will wait they will make us wait for three months and then when we review it and consume back then again we will have to wait for two to three months and publishing also it may take for six to three months i mean three to six months because some of the a lot of uh, you know a huge amount um, um, number of papers will be there and volumes will be less in the, all reputed journals so one might not be able to find scholarly information about the something current something currently being reported in the news obviously imagine you might have heard about uh, so and so scientists have, have done so, so and so uh, thing so that if you want to read the paper the paper will not be there because that discovery they found it and they have applied somewhere the patent or some thing some information they got it they got it got accepted by the journals or publications so they made it as uh, public but that is not at uh, the data is not available at public okay so searching in an alternative or searching is obviously is an iterative process okay how experiment with different keywords and uh, operators when you start we are uh, doing searching you need to experiment with different different keywords as I, in my study i started with the silver nanoparticles uh, antibiotics antibacterial property those these are the keywords and penicillin species these are the keywords so you can play with the keywords and you can interchange the keywords and see you can keep on experimenting with the different keywords and operators so you might get the most uh, whatever the articles you want and then evaluate and assess the results uh, assess the results use filters so obviously you need to evaluate basically all not all the papers you are not going to uh, 
So you need to evaluate in the sense you need to see all the titles, subtract all our keywords, everything in it, and then filter it, and then modify the search as needed. If it is yet you are not getting information, modify the search, get the information, and when relevant articles are found, look at uh, their citations and references. Once they're done, on the information is there, look at for their citation and their references and all. So after the search is complete, now the researchers needs to engage a critical th and th th thorough reading. Obviously, once you have completed with your research, uh, I mean, uh, the downloaded everything, then you need to engage in critical and thorough reading. Once all the papers are downloaded critically and thoroughly, you need to read, you need to make observation, highlight that uh, those observation, whatever you have, me uh, have made okay of the salient points in those particular sources and summarize the findings once you summarize the findings that will be helpful for you to connect the dots between the different different uh, papers and compare later a detailed comparison and contrast of the findings is also required to be done obviously the comparison and contrast is very important so both this has to be done okay as uh, we discussed at the same point in the last previous class or previous class also okay what happens when you have that particular this thing so that uh, comparison or when you, and when you have summarized these things you can connect all the dots with different different properties for example so and so people have worked on the silver nanoparticles uh, and the other person and they have worked on the gold nanoparticles so these people have worked on this so sort of thing and they, they have got this result they have got this result that can be compared so comparison and contrast is plays a very important this entire process may be needed to be done in multiple times that's the problem see whole process whatever i have explained so far from the big topic number one you have to do it again and again and again and again so that you will get more accuracy and more accurate results okay now the conclusion of the entire process of value of literature includes a summary of the relevant and important work done so you will come to know what after review of literature whatever the summary first thing is what and all work has been completed so summary of relevant and important work done why relevant relevant to your idea or field next also the identification of missing links so that is the research gap what is missing that is also you can you will be identifying next the challenges in the open problems in the area under study that now uh, this whatever the research gap has been done a problem statement that has got that will give you a new uh, what's the opportunities or uh, obviously the challenges when you solve you'll get the opportunities i mean to cho to to solve the pro uh, uh, challenges uh, you have the opportunities so obviously so one must note that the literature survey is a continuous process and cylindrical process and it's or a cyclic cyclical pro process that means it has to keep on going so once it is done it doesn't stop there again there will be some continuation or maybe a repetition okay so both are same thing continuation if the work is right if the reputation if he or not expecting getting the results what he wanted to get so that may involve uh, in the researchers going back and forth till the end of the research project so it is mandatory for a, uh, for example uh, for a phd student it's mandatory to write up a synopsis of a particular topic and submit it to the doctoral committee for a committee for approval or else his registration will not occur so during this stage the scholar needs to undertake an extensive literature survey Obviously, if you want to write synopsis, there has to be wonderful literature survey. So for that, uh, you need to take care of the extensive literature survey, which is connected to the problem. So for this purpose, uh, a lot of journals you can look in, into, and then published and unpublished bibliographies you can look into, and these are the best places for to, to check out the information, whatever he needs. One source leads to another source, and that's how the information will uh, he will get here or he or she will get so that's how the PhD students can use this particular this thing so th that's what uh, that's it about the effective search the way forward uh, discussed from starting to the uh, PhD students uh, this thing submission uh, next topic we are having introduction to technical reading that we will discuss in the next class